Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. So I was wrong about Boros humans, and I had to do a complete rebuild, and let's, uh, let's jump into it here. But first, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. I really do appreciate you guys. You guys mean the world to me. I will have a deck list here, both on untapped.gg and moxfield.com in the description. And then also a playlist for all of my videos, both uh, constructed content and limited content for drafts, um, best of one standard. So check those out if you're interested. I do want to give a shout out here also to my members. So thank you guys for becoming members and helping to support the channel. It's a really great way to help kind of not only get early access to my content, but also help support me and help support my channel growing. So if you want to learn how to do that, here is exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. So I was playing Boros Humans here a little bit on the ladder today and just things were not working with the old list and I had to completely scrap it and rebuild it from the ground up. And I I think it was working off faulty reasoning that basically Knight Aaron of Eos didn't make sense because I wanted to make room for a lot of like early interaction to deal with some of the mono red aggro decks that are just super fast. But that was kind of a faulty straw man argument. And it, it ended up just being a lot more effective with Knight Aaron of Eos in. And so I looked at really increasing the one drop slot. Um, not necessarily that this deck is better or worse than Boris Convoke. It's just different. And there's a lot of different cards that go into it. Um, I think that maybe Boros Convoke probably has like a higher ceiling uh, in terms of what it can do, but Boros Humans is more consistent because the mana base is a lot better. Um, and that's partially one of the big draws here is that every single land can produce white mana on turn one when you need it. And with Imidane's Recruiter, we have uh, 15 sources here uh, that can provide access to red mana. So that's a pretty good ability to play that card and have it, you know, reliably happen on turn three. Uh, but everything else, yeah, every single land can produce white mana, at least for one turn. And that really helps kind of get things going. So with this deck, we've got 15 one drops. I tried to sort of pick the most aggressive humans. Um, that's part of the reason that you're not seeing cards like Novice Inspector. It is, you know, excellent in the Boris Convoke deck. But in this deck, you know, I'm, I'm really looking at creatures that have higher power, like Recruitment Officer. Um, yes, it can be good with Warden of the Inner Sky, but because we're not running Gleeful Demolition, there's just not enough of an upside to be running it. <clears throat> so we are able to run cards like a full playset of Lunark Veteran, three copies of Hopeful Initiate, which works really well with Warden of the Inner Sky, a full playset of Recruitment Officer, and a full playset of Warden of the Inner Sky. For our two drops, we have Copper Coat Vanguard to buff the entire team. Three copies of Intrepid Adversary. I had it at four, but I wanted to kind of make room for some resolute reinforcements because that does work really well with both Warden and Imanane's Recruiter and Knight Aaron of Eos. So it seemed like a natural include. So I kind of shifted some things around. So we've got three copies of each and then a Singleton here of Thalia, just because it can disrupt a lot of different decks. And since this deck is not running any spells outside of the trained troops um, adventure here on Imidane's Recruiter, it seemed like a natural include. And then for our three drop slot and above, we have a full play set of Adeline, Imidane's Recruiter, and Knight Errant of Eos. The deck runs 22 land, which seems like kind of the minimum that you want to run in order to reliably hit Imidane's or Adeline on turn three. And 
we have <clears throat> only three pain land in the entire deck, which is a really nice draw. Like between only th having three pain land and a full playset of Lunark Veteran, I think this is actually much better suited to like the mono red matchup. Um, I could be wrong, but that's just my initial thought there. And then we have a full playset of Iganjos for our only source of interaction in the entire deck. And then we have full playset of Cavern of Souls, Inspiring Vantage, two copies of Zecluded Courtyard just to help out again with avoiding pain, and then two copies of Mirix to make um, some additional kind of late game stuff here. So that is the deck. Let's go ahead and jump in. we're currently uh, diamond three and so <clears throat> slowly working our way up on the ladder all right let's see what we're up against here opening hand looks great i'll pretty much keep any two lander all right let's go ahead and lead out with veteran just against an unknown opponent we're not sure we're up against and either way, you just want to get the life if at all possible. Yeah, there's a lot of mono red, a lot of Boros on ladder, so it's usually a pretty safe bet to lead out with Veteran. All right, and then we'll just kind of play out our hand here, get our one drops on the table. So we've got a nice setup here for Night Errant next turn if we draw a land, um, or I guess if they don't kill a creature. Pretty high likelihood that they kill something, but if we draw a land, we can still get there. Yeah, and they've got Invasion of Tark here. That's really good against us. It's probably one of the best cards Mono Red can have. I was going to be pretty much okay with any other card that they would have played, but <laughs> Invasion is super tough. Okay, luckily we drew the land. That's super big game. That kind of put us right back in there. Alright, so let's pick up... Definitely the Copper Coat... I think we might just want to go for veteran here. Normally I would just snap the veteran, but because we're dealing with a potential dragon on our hands, um, we might want more creatures or possibly warden. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have time to build up the warden though. So I'm just going to go for veteran here to kind of keep our life total high. Hey, well, we got to respect this because, I mean, this will definitely end our game, so. Yeah, that was really nasty. Well, at the very least, they didn't flip it, so there is that. Okay, draw and land there is super important. It is a consideration whether to keep the Aganjo to deal with the potential dragon that's going to be coming in next turn. Um, however, I think going for a Knight Errant of Eos is just more important. So I think we just play everything out and get our Knight Errant going. They will get the dragon, but I think we'll just have to deal with that hurdle when we get there.
Yeah, I mean, Invasion of Tarkir is a, such a good card against this deck. Okay, Imitane is a good one. Um... So what's the play here? I think we could just go for double double copper coat just to tie up their mana a little bit. Seems better than just warden plus recruiter. We want to do like a recruiter next turn ideally. Plus this also lets us attack in with officer, which is really nice. And now that we've got double copper coat, they won't be able to target either one of them at least this turn. So I think now we just push, I mean, they can trade Swift Spear here, but I mean, it is what it is. If they're just gonna take it, we actually have a shot at this. Invasion number two is brutal. There goes our copper coat. Okay, that's actually a decent a decent draw here. So now if we go veteran plus recruiter and all in. They block these two and they take three, five, seven, drop to two. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. We don't really have time for trained troops. Like, I guess we could, but they don't have super good blocks afterwards, and, like, they won't be able to kill everything. So I think this is the play. And they've got force blocks on those two, I think. Yeah, that was a pretty nice reversal there. We definitely needed like all of the land, all the creatures right on time. Okay, Squee is good. I mean, because now they can flip the other dragon and they can take out like our officer and have like a dragon back, but it's not going to be enough. I think that they're just dead at this point. <clears throat> Actually, I suppose this way they could kill something, have the dragon, have two blockers. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, this, unfortunately, 
We need to draw well here. That was perfect. <laughs> Couldn't have asked for anything more. And that'll do it. Whew. Right on the edge on that one. Opening hand looks good. Yeah, I think I really like adding reinforcements back into the deck. It definitely makes it a lot more dynamic. Okay, Boros Humans versus Boros Convoke. Who will emerge victorious? They're very similar in what they do, but there's like 20 to 24 different cards. So it's a huge difference. Um... So if we had Night Aaron in hand, we'd probably hold reinforcements here, which we could still do, but I think maybe just getting Thalia going. Actually, I guess I'd rather go with the reinforcements. Like they could go for, I suppose if we if we go for Thalia, they won't be able to play War Leader's Call, but it's only a two of in the deck. Like this holds back their Inspector, but I think I just want to go for the big play and try to go for Knight Errant. If we have four, we have a semi-decent chance of drawing one. I guess the other downside is it does... Um, if we played Thalia, that would have cost an extra. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah, they wouldn't have been able to go for Knight Errant there, so I, I forgot about that. We definitely should have played Thalia there. They're living the dream on the turn two Knight Errant. Yeah, into Recruiter. Oh, God. I think we might just be dead, but we'll try to try to hold it together here. Yeah, so object lesson on, you know, definitely playing Thalia there over the reinforcements. Now Thalia is kind of not really doing much. Um, I guess we could still run it here. Let's see, do we just die next turn if they go for Recruiter? I don't think they can just kill us in one turn. Oh yeah, here they just want to get uh, Case going, which makes sense. So we'll get our two free kills here. Not 100% sure that that was actually worth doing, but I guess it's okay. We could go for Adversary. We could also go for Adeline, Hold the Aganjo. <clears throat> yeah, I guess because of their Inspector, ad Adversary seems a little better. 
Plus, it like opens up the possibility of recruiter plus something else. So now we can swing out. Um, I guess that they could have like reinforcements. They probably do have reinforcements in hand, but I think that's okay. I guess like. We get to grow initiate. I mean, they can. I suppose they can trade for Thalia if they have like reinforcements. But I think it's still fine. I think we just push. Let's see. Do we just die next turn? Um, if we push with everything, they can. If they play recruiter, if they go like uh, reinforcements into recruiter, we're almost certainly dead. I think we definitely go with these two at least. If they go in reinforcements into recruiter. Can block here, go to 19, and then have a couple more blocks. Yeah, I think this is probably the safest attack. It just comes down to whether or not they've got reinforcements here. And since they didn't play land, there's a good chance that they do. Yeah, there's the reinforcements. So even if they have Recruiter here... Oh, they, they didn't draw the mana. Well, that's excellent. So we could drop to 10. If they have, like, another reinforcements or something like that... If we swing next turn with Recruiter, can we kill them? Not into six guys, I don't think so. So I think we actually, we do make the trade here. is good we can go like Adeline plus veteran and set up for recruiter we could also push with these two actually I guess if we just go recruiter this turn and push like we're going to 18 well actually we'll go to 19 and then if they kill anything we'll go to like 20 if they They could block like Recruiter, I suppose, with Knight Errant. I think they're just dead though, right? So I guess they block block and then we take, they take four, seven, yeah, they're dead. Oh man, there's so much math you've got to do, like how safe are your attacks in these kind of fights. Good game. <coughs> okay, so even with the stumble of not playing um, the Thalia as opposed to the uh, the reinforcements. We still pulled it out, which is great. Yeah, very tight game, though.
All right, opening hand looks great. We've got stuff to do. Two lands. Nice turn to Warden. Okay, so this is the Boros Heroic deck that like pumps everything onto um, like a double strike guy or whatever. Okay, another officer is okay. I think we can do better though. We wanna try to get um, like a recruiter or something like that. Okay, that's a good one. So I think here, we probably just want to play all of these out and then just double activate. Hopefully they can't kill us in one turn. I guess the other option, we could go for Vanguard here and then pump once to make this thing a 4-4 to push some damage. That actually is probably better because it gives us like a blocker. Yeah, I think this actually, I think this makes more sense. Okay, don't need that. Definitely want to preserve our life total as much as possible here. Question is if they have trample. Seems like they do. I guess like we could like force him to have it. So if they play monstrous rage, which they almost certainly have. Push through some damage. They probably want to hold like Lauren's escape. We don't really have any way to deal with our guys though. So I think we just, I think we take it. Okay, that was an excellent draw. Let's see if they have like a play with fire. Um, I'm just thinking if we if we push everyone here, we could like get this thing into the air, swing for five with that, and then like block, block, block. They take nine. It's not enough. Okay.
question is, do we double pump? Get this to six in case they have, because they could have witch stalkers. Actually, they can't target it with witch with witch stalkers, so never mind. Um, that way, we have two blockers. We're pushing a little bit more damage. Will this extra toughness matter? I think we can finesse a little bit here. I believe in the copper coat back because it has two toughness. Just in case they have some sort of double strike trample nonsense. And this way, if they do have witch stalkers, they can't just take out the warden. They've got to chew through all six points. All right, so is there anything they can do to the Kumano? If they go like Monstrous plus Twin Strike, that gets this to do functionally 10 damage. That's not enough. So I think if we block here, we're, we're okay. Because if they go Monstrous plus Twin Strike here, that gives it four, five. So it'd be a nine nine double strike that's 18 minus six is 12 14 yeah we survive okay there's monstrous It's a lot of damage, but we're not dead. They're at 20, so we're pushing 4, 7, 10, 12, 14, 15. If they have another life gain thing, we're in trouble. So I think we attack with these three. Maybe maybe these four to drop them down to 10. And then have everything else on defense. Because they're gonna have eight points. We're gonna gain four here from this, so we'll go to 12. Because we need all this to kill them next turn. Um, go to 12, and then we can soak two, four, five points. I think let's try it. Now let's definitely reveal our hand here. Okay, so now if we throw everything at the Swift Spear, one, two, three, four, five, that functionally puts our life up to 17. Let's try that. OK, 
Okay. It's not enough. Ah, oh, but they had the life gain. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, the life gain did it. Ugh. Brutal. Okay. So if they draw land, they can activate this. Um, that's like, like, best case scenario, they draw land. I guess they could draw like a tapped land. They'd be sending two, eight, 11 at us. Three, yeah, we can't, we just, yeah, we're just dead here, I think, unfortunately. Oh well. They had to have the life gain also. Yeah, let's see, because now we can block five points. We take, yeah, we're still dead. Close one. All right, opening hand looks good. Since we've got uh, three one drops, we can lead out here with officer. push adversary here just for the life gain but i think that double one drop is pretty strong if they don't have like end the festivities this is pretty good um yeah i think let's just do that instead Oh man, they did have end the festivities. Brutal. Brutal. Hopefully no witch stalkers here. I'm surprised that they didn't. I mean, if they had attacked with mana up, I don't think I would have blocked. So that was kind of interesting. We could have gone for officer there, but I just want to get the lifelink into play. Now I think we just push with Adeline here.
think at 14, we're sh we should be okay here. They've only got one card in hand. Um, do we want Hopeful Initiate? Yeah, I mean, it's better than nothing, I think. It, it, it helps us a little bit. We could do better, but we could certainly do worse also. I guess, actually, is land worse than Initiate? We could still use the Myrix. Maybe we can do slightly better. I guess it does let us double spell next turn, so it's probably good enough. Okay, so they're representing either Monstrous Rage or maybe like Play With Fire or something like that. Um, I guess we can hedge here and like block Scoundrel. This makes me think that, I mean like this way we get something either, either way. And we'd rather have them use it on the Warden than on the Adversary. So I think we block here and see what they've got. Yeah, play with fire. That works. Now I think we hold back the token and get these two in to start growing the initiate and get some life back. Hopefully they don't draw any more in the festivities anytime soon. Looks good to me. They are officially out of gas. So now we could blow up the Kamano with Hopeful Initiate. Um, let's play out the planes here also just so we have access to Officer. So I think we full send. Actually, we can leave back the token here. But everything else we can send with. And now, depending how they block, we can get rid of their etching. Yeah, I think that's fine. We just let that happen. Gonna be pretty hard for them to come back from this. I can't even think of the string of cards they would need. Yeah, that'll do it. So far, really liking this build though. Like, it just. It does seem to be quite a bit faster than the other build. And there is certainly a lack of removal, but I mean, it's very aggressive and the mana is pretty consistent. All right, hand looks great. Maybe we like pick up a one drop. We've got 15 one drops. So there's a decent chance, like a one in four, a little bit better maybe of drawing a one drop. Third land isn't bad though. I mean, now we've got access to Adeline. Oh man, yeah, another Boros heroic deck. And Virtuoso is a really tough card to deal with.
This is where it really hurts not having any kind of interaction. Yeah, I think this might just be over. Yeah, that's just gonna do it. Well, so it goes. Ended up going three and two, so, eh, you know, it was all right. Let's take a look at the overall stats of the deck. So currently nine and seven, 56% uh, win rate, so it's it's doing okay. Now this has been through a couple versions. So yeah, most recently we just went three and two. Um, and I think that, you know, one possibility that you could look at is trying to make room for Brutal Cathar. I, I've just kind of built this as sort of like an all-in, just bash your face against <laughs> the opponent, um, push everything sideways kind of deck. But you probably could run in some Brutal Cathars here, make room for some of that. Um, you know, and potentially other, if you wanted to make room for any removal, I'd probably start with March um, at uh, the one mana slot. So yeah, March of Otherworldly Light really helps as well. The mana is gonna be a little tough to support it, but it's um, that's another consideration. So anyways, thanks guys for watching. Again, I appreciate you, you guys are awesome. We'll see you next time.